Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power A double X Hey, 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 my name is Davis and I'm from Haiti, but I'm living in Dominican Republic. I'm here, Positive Power 21, Jerry Walls Live, worldwide. That's right, you tell them, you tell them, little buddy, you're listening to Worldwide, Late Night with Jerry Walls Live, worldwide, starring Kimmy Kim from Relation Radio. Welcome, everybody. Hope you had a super duper duper weekend we sure did right we had a chance to visit the beautiful campus of north carolina a t yeah beautiful campus beautiful campus it was time for all the little kiddos all the college students to return back to their dormitories <laughs> their residence that's all they they're going to be doing virtual that's right virtual study on campus y'all that's what they do now why are they on campus? It don't make no sense, but that's what they do. But I think they do have some in-class instructions, but 15, I think it's limited to 15 students, and I think every other class they switch up, and then the other 15 or whatever is studying from their dormitories, uh, compliments of Zoom. Everybody's on Zoom now. But there's some other ones out there, but some of the big boys recommend Zoom. I heard um, Big Tony Robbins been using Zoom. But I saw Les Brown on Facebook Live. Hmm. That's interesting. But Batman got to find out because uh, we got some people ready to break out their, their classrooms. And they want to they wanna be on the best platform money can buy. All right, y'all. Well, look, um, thank you for tuning in. The Late Night with Jura is live. Tonight, our special guest is One Purpose. That's right. We got Mr. Jordan Mackey's going to be here and Miss Judith going to be here to represent the group. Tell us a little bit about what's going on with them. They're going to be interviewed by Miss Kimmy Kim from Relations Radio and Relations Artists and Relations um, Magazine. She's, she's just a big CEO. What's going on, Kimmy Kim? How you doing? What's going on in your world? I am blessed, Jerry. How are you doing today? Uh, well, you know, long trip, man. You know, that whole, that weekend went by like that when you when you you six hours on the road. You know what that's like. Oh, wow. I thought that was nice. I'm going back to the campus. I love my stuff. Yeah, yeah. They have some really nice scenery as you drive through the yeah. city. Yeah, we saw some great things. Some, uh, my wife, of course, she wanted to look at big houses and stuff. But when we had time, we was in Walmart because <laughs> the kids didn't bring They forgot <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I, hey, I love I said, my Walmart you, now. <laughs> yeah, you got to have a checklist, you know, with them because they're going to wait till the last minute to pack. And then when they do pack, they're going to be forgetting some stuff. And I knew it. So um, me and my little dog, he made me, we was in the truck most of the time, <laughs> just waiting. <laughs> yeah, napping and waiting, snacking. Yeah, but it was good just to get away, get a little bit of break, break away from social media, break away from the NFL. Man, I just I just shut yes. it all down. Just just listen to some local radio. Chief, 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 chief. Yay, we yeah, made I it. Know. Yeah, you made it in there again. That's your, that's your hometown, right? That's your I, team? That's your team? Well, team? that's my home team. I'm actually from St. Louis, but we didn't have a team when I was growing up in the city of St. Louis. Yes, so they I did. Adopted, uh, they Kansas did have city a team. 1990. Y'all had the St. Louis Cardinals. Mm-hmm. What are you talking about? Y'all had the St. Louis Cardinals. Well, they moved. Remember, they moved to Arizona. I so I didn't start watching football until later after oh, okay. they left. So I adopted Kansas City. All right, okay. We, they don't count. You can't <laughs> adopt team. You got to go by the team that's in your neighborhood. <laughs> so, so your team no, is the Cardinals. I've been a Kansas City Chiefs like through the Marty times. You know, Marty, the, the Willie old school coach. Yeah, I'm old school. I, it just didn't come, you know, when um, um, Mahone came. I, I mean, I've been there. I've been with yeah, them right. since. Mm-hmm. Pick you know, team. tenth grade. See my dad. School. See my dad. He's he, he's straight up. He he just root for the Colts because you know the Colts. You know that was our original Baltimore team, and he roots heavy for the Ravens. But he still roots for the mm-hmm. Colts quietly. You know because he got two AFC oh. teams. Yeah, yeah. He root for them quietly. Um, not too much now. You know since Peyton Manning been gone, he I don't think he's that big of a fan right now. He doesn't know who the players are. <laughs> but you know. <laughs> anyway, it's going to be a great game. I used game. to love Peyton Manning. I love Peyton Manning. Yeah. I just didn't like how they did him in 
in Indianapolis. So yeah, that's, um, that's, that's I kind of still got a, you know, a uh, sour taste in my mouth. But that's how the but Ursays do I'm business. I'm glad that he was able to. What did he expect? Uh-huh. That he just picked his team up and left Baltimore without no warning. <laughs> Shoot, you know he's gonna he's gonna rip off some players. <laughs> I mean that was that was gonna happen. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Shoot, he, he ripped off the. But whole remember city. when Peyton Manning was injured while he was in Colts, they let him go. Yeah, so I know. But that's how they that's how they do you, man. I mean, look, that guy, the ownership left the city without no warning. <laughs> what Peyton Manning think they was yeah, gonna do with him? That's what they get. Yeah, that's what they was gonna do with him. <laughs> That's yep. what they get. Yep. They should never left. I think Payne Manny would uh brought them another Super Bowl had they been patient. Maybe, maybe. They didn't have the all the pieces, yeah. all the horses yeah. like Denver had. <laughs> well anyway, <laughs> um real quick, uh the course we're gonna see in the Super Bowl, the the goat against the kid, they call it. You know, like a kid, the goat, baby goat. That's mm-hmm. what they call him, Mahomes, the kid. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be a big... He about to pass the torch to Mahomes, yeah. baby. <laughs> yeah, he not ready. I, mean, I don't think Brady ready. Take he, it for, from me. He's yeah. going to rain. Brady Mahomes not ready to... Eat to it up. I don't think Brady ready to pass anything. But if you think about it, Brady and, and Mahomes were the last quarterbacks that won Super Bowls. Because Brady won, uh, I think, two prior to uh, Mahomes. Either he, I'm not sure if he won them, but he was in the Super Bowls. But... He's, this is right. 10 appearance, so that's incredible. That is incredible. So it must have been him. It, but it you remember him. Peyton Manning won, I think it was like right, be, right before he retired, too. Did he? At Denver. Okay. Yeah. I, thought the, uh-huh. I thought the Ravens had beat him that year, and they went to the Super Bowl. No. Uh. Um, remember, that was the year, I think it was like the 50th anniversary for in mm. NFL. Yeah, you could be right. You could he be won right. that. Yeah. Yeah. You could oh, be I know right. my football. Yeah. Yeah, I feel you. Football. I'm a I'm a guy when it comes to football. <laughs> yeah, you make a perfect wife. <laughs> That's right. Make but sure you bring... the thing is, it wasn't the same this year. Oh. Listen to I know. But it's okay. All right, Kimmy Ken. Look, Batman got to get off of here so you can interview your guests. Um, we can talk about football for I cannot ever. wait. You know, we talk about for ever. But real quick. Pounds and I'm interviewing two of the members and I'm just excited. I listened to the music and I, I felt the worship of God. Great music. Worship music and still has a little hip hop in it. You know, it's it's amazing how you can still worship God with hip hop. I could be wrong, but that's what I felt, you know, but I still have had that praise and worship. Yeah, wow, they're they a great group. Um, I met them a while ago when they were they were called uh, I think FTC. Um, so they went through okay. a name change because that was a little thrown when I saw the. I, remember, I said I know this group, and then I, I had to report yeah. back to Mr. Jordan Mackey to find out what was going on, and he told me, uh, you know, they did do a name change, so they rebranding, so they're here. On late night with Jerry was live and Kimmy Kim to tell us what is going on in their neck of the woods. So let's find out. But before I bring them on, everybody, don't forget to join us Tuesday starting at seven o'clock with Mr. and Mrs. Devil Slayer Dwayne and Kia Matthews will be here at seven o'clock. And then at eight, you have Transforming Bible Lives with my lady, my mama. That's right, Dr. Virginia Singleton and her producer's son. Oh, wow, That's she's right. back. She so, been back. I miss her. Oh, Dr. She, B is she, back. Dr. Oh B, goodness. she haven't gone nowhere. She been here forever. She, she only left one time. Know, that was two I, years ago. I thought you were talking about like she's actually coming back to the radio. No, she's oh, been she's here. Yeah, she haven't gone nowhere. She just, I'm just reminding okay. people to tune in at 8 o'clock for Dr. V. And then, okay. don't forget, at 9 o'clock, you have you more radio and then uh, we have, let me see who we got at 9 o'clock. Oh, yeah, with the testimony coming out of New York City with my good friend, Paula Breon. Uh, she used to be a house yeah. music diva, if you guys are familiar, with Crystal Waters and Colonel Abrams and all of them out of the 70s and the 80s. No, I'm sorry, the 80s and the 90s. And then after that, we're going to have uh, Pearls of Veronica. She's going to have her, uh, I think her nephew is going to be here to talk about his his, oh, wow. his journey uh, through the pandemic, you know, not able to attend school. And I guess some of the things that's going on in his mind. So it's going to be a young, young person okay. perspective. So join us, y'all. We got four Wonderful podcast, back to back to back, starting at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So come join us, y'all. Change change things up and get away from television. All right, here we go. Let's let them in. Judith and Jordan, welcome to Late Night. How you guys doing? Ladies and gentlemen, how you doing? Doing well. How are you? Awesome, sir. I'm I doing am doing well. good, too. I'm good. 
But look, I just wanted to say hello. Kimmy has the interview, and you guys have a great show. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow, my family. Thank you so much for coming on with Jerry Wars. And once again, Jerry Wars, thank you for this opportunity. I love calling you my boss. You're the reason why I'm here. But your music is dope. But before we go into that, um, who is... I, I just want to thank you so much for this opportunity to interview you. Your music is amazing. So um, oh, I want to know you. who is. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. Um, I want to know who is Jordan first and then who is Judas first? Because that music, that song that I listened to was really amazing. And it had a young flavor and still some old school twist in it. So mm-hmm. who are you? Yeah, well, my name is Jordan Mackey. Uh, I'm the founder of One Purpose Gospel, and I also am uh, one of the arrangers, producers, and musicians for the group as well. Okay. And I'm Judith Masoki, and I'm the MD. I sing. I'm in the alto section, and I also help with arranging, vocal arrangement. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I love you guys. And what is the name of your group now? Oh, yes, the name of our group is One Purpose uh, Gospel. Originally, we were based from Five Towns College out okay. in Dixos, New York. And okay. uh, we've started a, uh, a process, a project at Five Towns College. But, you know, as time goes on, you know, you graduate. And, mm-hmm. you know, God gave us the idea to start up something new that was definitely in the same a vein as gospel choir, but something that's definitely um, original and unique with a, a different twist with it. So that's basically what One Purpose is. Oh, wow. One Purpose. What is the synopsis behind One Purpose? Because uh, that's a deep um, group name, One Purpose. Mm-hmm. What is One Purpose? I mean, it had to be a reason why you came up with One Purpose. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, I'll say for me, when um, when we were uh, kind of coming up with the the whole process for the project, um, I was kind of just thinking of, you know, some different things and praying on some different um, topics uh, that, that we should really focus on. And I noticed a lot of people that I was working with the school, that was the main issue that, mm-hmm. uh, you know, people within, you know, I want to say 18 to 24 that they were struggling with was finding what it is that they truly are here for. And at that point, um, as we were doing this and we were writing the songs, um, it was revealed that this was, this was the um, whole reasoning. This is the whole concept of what we're uh, supposed to bring out and really share to the people by purpose. And to uh, back it up by scripture, um, Romans 8, uh, 28, and we know that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. You can't go to Romans 8. Together. No, yeah. that, that's my favorite chapter in Romans. Oh, we, we already, oh, we family anyway, but you really, uh, thank you. Turn, we are family. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yep. But um, to answer your question, that's how um, we got the name One Purpose. Awesome. And do this. Um, you said that you arranged a book at uh, vocal list, and uh, that is one of your many duties. I I I uh, was you know just mm. uh, listening to the music, and I just heard so many wonderful uh, unity in that song. Um, mm-hmm. What what is your are your um, soprano alto? And when you when you sing, how does that make you feel? Because when I heard that, I, I felt so much unity. I felt so much joy. And at the same time, there was still the message behind it. I felt the message of praising God, how important God mm-hmm. is to you, you all as a group and in, individually. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm an alto, so I always start with my alto line. And then I always, then from there, I start making everything else. But with this uh-huh. song, this song was written with um, Esther. And mm-hmm. so she came, she had a, you know, like a basis and then, we just came together to like um, create the finished product for the vocals. So it was a mm-hmm. um, collaborative effort. But like, um, 
yeah, like when when we did it, we just felt something. It was it was mm. definitely amazing. And like even me hearing the song for the first time, because she she pretty much like she wrote the lyrics. So when I heard it for the first time, I was like, wow. And I was like, okay, I think I have something else that could enhance it even more. And it was tough because I was recording. I didn't have a microphone at the time. So I had uh-huh. to, you know, pretend I had to make my bedroom into some kind of recording studio, use the curtains as a booth. Like, oh, wow. It was crazy. It's creativity. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and I, you know, I'm in Queens and you're hearing the motorbikes and, and stuff like that. And I was just like, you know, had to keep retaking, retaking so that I can send to her to see if she likes it. But yeah, that's how that's how we came about with it. And it was a fun process. Definitely a fun mm, process. I love the song. And by the way, I don't know, uh, with all respect, are you are you from the United States? Because you have a strong, I love your accent. It's beautiful. Oh, you thank here? you. No, I'm not. <laughs> no. Where are you Actually, from? I'm from London. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I love it. I can just listen to your voice all day. Like, it's so soothing. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> well, thank you so much. And uh, when I think about your song, um, um, you were mentioned Romans 8.28. Do you guys also have a favorite character of the Bible? And if so, who would that character be and why? Oh, that's a good mm. question. I've got to think about that. <laughs> I'm going to come back to your music too, but it it was really a deep fall for me because when I listened to it, I I felt the worship of a Paul. I felt the worship of a Job. I felt the worship of a David. You know, it was just so amazing. Yeah. And Jesus, of course. Yeah. You know what's so crazy? You literally just said the person I was thinking of, David. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Because, um, the reason why I say, as uh, as of right now, um, reason why uh, David was my favorite was, although he was uh, anointed, he knew how to get to the, uh, you know, the face of God. He knew how to mm. um, have an encounter with God. He knew how to, you know, to reach out to God, even when he made mistakes. You know, he had a repentant heart. Mm. You know what I mean? And that was the difference mm. between Ooh. him and Saul. So that's, mm. for me, that just that alone, you know. And it, 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 it's really hard to say because it, uh, it's, it's so many, there's so many choices. There's so many. But if I have to say currently right now, I'd say David. Mm. David's one of my favorite mm-hmm. things. <laughs> 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 How about you, do this? <laughs> yeah, I, as soon as you said David, I was like, yep, that's my one. <laughs> Because, you know, he was, like, most of the, uh, the writers of Psalms, so it's, yeah. like, yeah. it's like mm-hmm. appropriate to say that because it also reminds me, oh, oh bless the Lord for my soul, or um, another song that I love about David is As I Walk Through the Valley of Shadow of Death. It's, it's, yeah. just, it's just so many songs I love. Oh, mm-hmm. bless the Lord, and oh, taste the Lord and see that he's good, and it's just so many different songs that I love of David, and... Uh, it's appropriate. It's the biggest book in the Bible. You know, I was just mm-hmm. reminded. Um, I was listening to a pastor on Sunday on TV, and he he mentioned something that was very profound, which is you know I knew, but it's just another reminder that Psalms is the biggest book in the Bible. So apparently, music is important to God. So how yeah. important is music wow. to you both? For me, it is. It is my well. God is my everything, but music is like. The next thing is it's um it means a lot to me only because I was the only thing that I knew I had the gifting in and I knew that that's what I was called to do. So mm-hmm. I take music very seriously, especially music ministry. You know, mm-hmm. I take it very I take it very seriously. I always try and meditate, make sure is this the song that the Lord wants me to do at this time, Amen. at this place. So music for me is everything. It's everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. How about you, uh, my to, brother? Yeah, uh, to piggyback off of that, um, I would say, ask, well, first and foremost, you know, the word of God is the most important. But I'd say after that, you know, music ministry, it uh, mm. follows right up after that. 
you know. Um, for me, you know, it definitely has the potential to really drop, if done correctly and done effectively, it could really draw people in. Mm-hmm. And, mm. you know, from, I, definitely for myself, I could definitely relate. Uh, music definitely uh, served as a major um, factor in my life, definitely growing up as a kid. Um, a pastor's kid, you know, playing the drums. Oh, the PK. Yep. Yep. <laughs> hey, 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 yep. were you the good ones or the bad ones? <laughs> I'm just kidding. We uh, all bad. You know, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just kidding. Please, please, please forgive me for that. That was just assumption, perception of the PKs. Not all PKs are like that. <laughs> yeah, but um, but yeah, you know, growing up in church playing drums and organ, it, it served as a major factor in my life. And then as uh-huh. I start to see the effect that it can have, not just from a musical standpoint, from a spiritual standpoint, the fact okay. that you know, like, uh, like I can go back to David. That the fact that when he was playing his harp and he literally um, the anointing that God put on him and he was drawing out evil spirits. My brother, are you on your phone? It's going in and out because we need to hear this information. I don't want no one. I'm sorry, can you hear me? There you go. I hear you better. Yes. Yes, I was just saying, um, yes, but music ministry is definitely essential because, uh, for one, it has the ability to bring forth healing and also has the ability to draw forth out. from Saul. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? So that's for me, that's that's why uh music ministry is extremely important. Yeah, because I'm still reminded something about music, it soothes your soul. It's like you're speaking to God and apparently it is important to God because he would not have made songs the biggest book in the Bible. But that being said, who writes your lyrics? It's a it's a collaborative effort. I'll definitely say with RC. Now with this song, "Impossible," the lyrics was written by Esther Jean Bart. Uh, she is another alto um in this group, and she's also part of the um the uh, writing team for one purpose. Um, but in terms of our group, the way how we do it, um, we usually have uh different individuals write a certain song. Um, we like. I'll give you an example. One of the songs that is currently out right now on all streaming platforms, uh, "You Are," was written by Judith Mazzocchi, and we'll work on the production together. Um, another person that works on the production, uh, a good friend of ours named James Joyner, um, mm-hmm. who works on you know programming, keys, organ, different things of that nature. So, uh, okay, that's kind of like the the, the base, like the team that works on like the lyrics and then also on the production as well. Oh, wow. I'm going to be honest. You are, you guys sound like a younger version of Sound of Blackness. <laughs> oh, you wow. guys, you guys, Thank you. You, you Thank guys you. need to really, I'm really, I need to reach out to them. Maybe I can combine and do a project together because, I mean, you have that, you got that, you know how sometimes you have fun with what you're doing? And that's mm-hmm. what I get from Sound of Blackness, and that's what I heard through your music. It's like you guys are having fun, and you're still making an impact in people's lives, and it, it seems like it's not work to you. And with that being said, who is your audience? Mm-hmm. Our audience, for me, our audience, you know, I'm, we're reaching everybody, young and old. Like, oh, I like that. Yeah, because the young, for us, because when they see people like us worshiping, and praising, mm-hmm. praising God, mm-hmm. they'll, they'll be like, "Oh, we can, we can do it too," and it and it's fine. It's you know we are called, you know we are set apart. So, you know, I want you know other youngsters to feel like, yeah, we we can be strong in our faith and we can go out and praise the Lord. And also for the for the older generation, for our mamas, grandmas, because like, you know, the songs are still the way we write the songs. It's very um you know deep we really put a lot of work into it and i feel like the message can really um hit the older generation and even the music like even though it might be a bit 
young, but like the message is still strong and it's still, we still have, it's still biblical and, and yeah, so for me, we're going for everybody, even the babies, we're going for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yep, absolutely. That's awesome. And one thing I love about music is that it, 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 it's like one thing that you can like play and it's like two or three years ago and you still remember the lyrics. What kind of impact would you like to have with your music for people? Uh, you know, honestly, for our music, I would love it to be where you go down. I want to say, you know, not just our kids or just our grand, um, our grandkids, but their grandkids. Oh wow! Okay, if you could play this mu- if you could play this music, and it's still relevant, and it's still effective, and it still does the job that it's supposed to do in terms of winning souls and reaching the laws, then you know that's that's uh it's done its job and it served its, you know, purpose. Absolutely. And you know what one thing one thing I could say about what you just said, I don't think it could ever lose its relevance is relevance because you're talking about God. God is all knowing. He cannot like even we get our uh, wings call and we're waiting on, on the coming of Jesus Christ, your music will still be here because it still has purpose. You're talking about salvation and you're talking about uh, how important it is to get right with the Lord, with your word. So even if even if it's like, you know, still, you know, playing, I think it'll be relevant because of that reason. Because I'm still reminded that you still can impact people with the older music or with the new, newer music. With that being said, what kind of music do you listen to when, while you're making this music? Do you listen to more of the older, the newer, the in between, or you listen to it all? And if so, who are some of your favorite artists? I'll, I'll let you to go first with this. Okay. <laughs> oh, <thank> you. <laughs> you might have a lot. <laughs> I didn't mean to call you on the spot. I didn't mean to call you on the spot. No, no, it's good. It's good. <laughs> well. The people I love listening to and um, a group I was listening to for the song, um, definitely the Clark Sisters. Oh, wow. Like, I, you old school. Okay. Yeah, like, I, I, you know, I love the Clark Sisters. Like, yeah, I I love Dorinda. Wow. Oh, sorry. Mm. Auntie Dorinda. My bad. Auntie Dorinda. I need to give her respect. Take a sign. <laughs> yeah, she Take is. Take a sign. Mm, and anointed and she lives like I saw her live stream and she she yo she gives good advice she definitely she's anointed and she's li- she lives the life yeah she yeah. definitely lives the life and who other people do I listen to so Clark Sisters I love Kirk Franklin in terms of oh, his en- like energy and his you know the way he arranges and composes uh-huh. and writes uh-huh. I take it. And it's a funny how he brought out this type of music and it's still going going strong. When he first brought out mm-hmm. Stump, they were like, What are you trying to do? And now it's like it it must be a stump or some type of music that's um a little, you know, lively because we used to stump now. I don't know mm-hmm. if you heard yeah. of stump that's like yeah, yeah, yeah. Many, many years. <laughs> he has so many oh, wonderful yeah. songs. I love his music. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. How about for you, yeah. uh, Gordon? Just, um, you know what? For me, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll give you um, some artists that really influenced uh, the project in terms of how we were uh, writing these songs and uh, where we're coming from a lyrical perspective from a music uh, musical perspective as well. So if I'm going to say from a musical perspective first, Ty Tribbett and ah, GA. Ty Tribbett ah, and GA. I, I okay. have to say when we first came out with this, like when we were first developing the, um, the idea for the project, it was heavily influenced by Ty Tribbett. Okay. Heavily okay. influenced. Okay. I, I'd say after him, it'd be Ricky Dillard. Um, oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, it's definitely like heavy choir stuff. You got Ricky Dillard, and you have, you know, your James Hall, your Hezekiah Walker, the Clark Sisters, of mm-hmm. course. Mm-hmm. Um, Kirk Franklin, of course. 
Uh, Lecrae. Yep. Okay. Okay. Lecrae. Yeah, okay. Hip hop there, so okay. You like the hip hop. <laughs> yeah, Lecrae. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? We also like, like you know some classical um, influences oh, yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like we really try to be as ver- like musically, we really try to make it as versatile as possible because you know um, versatility it is really important. helps draw. You know, it helps draw attention and keeps the interest. You know. Yes. Like you said, we need the old and the young because the old mm-hmm. uh, uh, helps the young, and the young keeps the old young. So we need mm-hmm. both. Yeah, yeah, we need both. Mm-hmm. I don't want to get old. I want to stay young. Yeah. So keep keep making that music so I could stop on your music. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. give God some praise and worship. And like, I like this. This is dope. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. I know y'all don't use dope anymore. It's probably what shade or that's lit. Um, no, like that. no, they still use that. They still use, <laughs> yeah, they use we still that use too. It. They use shade that as well. But yeah, they still use that. <laughs> <laughs> and so, how can people find your music? Where can they find? Um, this wonderful uh, single that you uh, have. What is the name of your single again? I forgot yes, to write so it the, down. Yes, the name of the single is called Impossible by One Purpose. Yes, that's And true. you can find us um, on all stream platforms at One Purpose Gospel. And you can also visit us on our website, uh, onepurposegospel.com. Mm-hmm. And you'll have everything, all the information there where you can um, download the music, where you can stream the music, um, upcoming, you know, details for our upcoming album that will be coming out um, pretty soon, uh, different things of that nature. So you can find us there. Okay, awesome. And also with your music, um, is it more so testimonial? Is it a message? Is it praise? Because I heard one song, I'm sure you have many, when there's a collection and you say, what is our target? Are we more worshiping? Are we more telling a story? What kind of, um, what kind of standards are, are you uh, developing when you do your song writing? You know, some mm-hmm. people, you know, target worship. Some people target a message. Or is it both? Mm-hmm. Well, I'd say for us, we, we try to cover all bases. Okay. And awesome. the reason why we try to do that is because, you know, everyone is in a different um, point in their walk with God, you know, so you want to be able to reach the people for where they're at. So that's why we have, uh, we uh, try to make it a first time in terms of like, you know, we have it where we have a praise, uh, praise song, a worship song, a song that talks about where God has brought brought you from you know Mm. a song of high praise different things of that nature you know so we try to keep it as um versatile as possible Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. wow that's beautiful not to be in a box because i'm feeling my my god is in a a box do you guys have any favorite scriptures that leads you to the um that wonderful that golden song that you tend to uh, follow after or mirror after? You know how some people say, I want to uh, have a scripture in mind, and this is our focus every time. I know it's going to be kind of hard to do that with music because you may have a different scripture, but it most likely do you have some scriptures that you, um, you use towards your music? And if so, do you have um, a scripture that you'd like to share? Yeah, so, you know, you may have that one scripture that says, you know, I can do all things with Christ to give me the strength. Okay, this is the song for that, you know. Something like that. You can go ahead and go first. Asa, can you repeat the question? You say you want a, a scripture after that comes that yeah. derives from the song? Yeah, do, do you sometimes, like, when you write music, because I have um, interviewed many artists, and they say, well, I must have a scripture for a basis of songs, do you look for a scripture for your songs, or is it just basically what God gives you when you make a song? For me, it depends. Well, it's both. It's definitely mm-hmm. both. Okay. Um, it depends where, like, how should I describe? Like when I first <laughs> thought, when I first thought a song, I know a word would just come up, and then from that word, I would start. I'll go into the Bible and look for oh, wow. um, certain um, verses 
that came with the word. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, but I know a scripture that I always um, read read before I go into writing a song or going into music arrangements, etc. Is be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And for in my music, in the music journey, I know the Lord is with me. When I'm trying to find this lyric, I'm trying to find this melody. The Lord is with me. He's 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 inspiring me. He's He's, he's helping me. That's, Girl. I hope I answered your question. Yes, you did. You just right, gave good. me, you just ministered to my soul. No matter what we're doing, we're going to keep on uh, being strong and encouraged because the Lord is with me. We need that because, you know, you could write good music, but if you don't know what you're writing about, how can you say it's from God? And that's why it's important to have a blueprint that is from God. And that's good to know when you're definitely reaching your audience because we do need you. We need you to touch the young people because um, we do um, have wonderful young people, but we have more young people. They think mm. that Christianity is boring, but when they hear your music, they can say, oh, wow, this is dope. We can listen to this type of music on the, on the authority of God. So it's good to see young people doing mm. good music because I'm, I'm getting older, and um, I'm going to need someone to help me cross the street, and I need your young people to come. So Whoa. I'm so, so, I'm so <laughs> you know, down the line. But I'm just so uh, grateful to hear young people um, making get good music. And are you in the North Carolina area, or what, what district or what state are you from? I went from New York. Oh, New York! Oh my, I, mm-hmm. don't, I love New York. <laughs> I, I love New York. Oh my, are you guys from New York? I'm not, no, you're from London, but you're from New York, um, Gordon? Are you from New York? Okay, okay. Okay, because um, I know New York breathes good music, even if it's if, uh, from the, you know, rapping, from R&B, you know, with Houston. So you guys are the are the grounds of making good music. So I thank you so much for sharing your location where you're from. New York is the place. Absolutely. Yeah, New York, I thought, it's so crazy. Because when I was in New York, I was minutes is not enough to share your journey. You know, you guys have so many, I, I see nothing but greatness, so much. Uh, Thank you so much. Uh, no. I see nothing but success because when you have a foundation that is founded on God, you can't help but win. And so mm-hmm. with that being said, what kind of legacy would you like to leave when the Lord calls you home and, you know, um, you get your graduation week? What kind of legacy you would like to leave behind on earth? For me, oh, oh, you go, Jordan, you go. No, no, you go, you go. I'm I'm already. I think that legacy I would love to leave behind is... um, Definitely, she definitely she was a a woman of God. She served mm. the Lord with all her heart, and um, also she she um, she she made a difference on the earth. Yeah, and she yeah. and the difference was she made it better for other people, mm. and 
other people feel empowered and inspired. I don't know why I'm talking she in third person, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because that's important. You want the impact. We are called to mm-hmm. serve each other. And so serving each other with the love of God in your heart, you want to impact lives. Absolutely. Yeah. How about you, my brother? You, you know what? I'll say uh, in terms of um, the group, uh, the legacy that I would love for us to leave is a group of integrity, a group that truly uh, goes forth the first declaration of the gospel and not just gets caught up in the antics and you know about the so called success. Your phone keeps going in and out, my brother. Oh. <laughs> I apologize. Can you hear me now? Is that better? Ah, yeah. Yes, much better. Okay, you know, that's, that's better. important, okay. your legacy. Your legacy is important. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah you got to hear it. You got to hear it. <laughs> um, I would say for the group, um, to be a group that's truly about um, integrity and true ministry, um, mm. that would be the legacy that we would love to be, like to leave. If we could see that people are getting healed and delivered and saved and set free, then we did our job. Then we did our what job. Did the, That's what did the service says? As long as I impact, if I could just say one soul, my life is not in vain. That's a song. Yeah. And, and that's what it's all about, impacting. It could be yeah. one, it could be many, mm-hmm. but just one. Just yeah. one. And so, you know so I, I, yeah, I apologize. No, 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 my brother, it's all about you guys. No, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what's so crazy? The fact that you mentioned that um, when we first started this and we were at five times, that was a prayer that I had. I said, God, if we could just get one person to be saved from this, then um, I know that this could this is going to go down the right path. And mm-hmm. our first meeting, our first meeting, I remember it was packed out in one of the classrooms and we were praying and um, I just felt the urge to ask for someone to get saved. And not only um, did one person get saved, but two people ended up getting saved <laughs> yeah. through this. So it was, and then later that semester, another person ended up getting saved. And then it just, you know, mm. it just kind of like, you know, had a domino effect. Mm-hmm. So, and yeah, you know that's why? It. It's, yes. it's, it's because that's what you want. It, it's amazing mm-hmm. if you, if you speak it, God gives it. Right? You said yes, if ma'am. I could just impact one life and you you're now you're impacting many. You just impact my life. You guys are amazing. You don't know this, oh. but you just minister to me. You're showing oh, me that God be the glory. Um, uh, we're brothers and sisters and he looks at our heart. He doesn't look at race, he doesn't look at whether you're black, white, Hispanic, Asian, where you're from, if you're rich poor. He looks at the heart. And just knowing that how beautiful you guys are internally is so amazing. And I'm just grateful so that I was able to have this fellowship. But no, you, you guys really blessed me on today with this music. And then the music can be backed up by the, um, the singers. You know, sometimes people sing songs, but they don't have any anointing. You know, they sing the song, but their heart is not there. But just know that you have a foundational scriptures you 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 love i can tell you you guys love each other i mean of course you're gonna have your ups and downs in the group that's just part of the you know people but just to know that you have to love there for one another that's amazing yeah absolutely Mm -hmm. yeah so that is so amazing so with this uh, being said uh before we leave i need for you guys to give a good a good um you know, a little nugget to the young people from you, um, Judith first and then Jordan. Because young people think that being a believer is boring. And you just demonstrate to them that it's not boring. You are having the best time in your lives. And guess what? You're living on purpose. Oh, my goodness. That's so amazing. Yep. So. Absolutely. <laughs> Yep. That is a, I, I wish I was your age when I got that. You know, you guys can be no more than 20. No more. 21. Oh, I'm 20. Yeah, you, you, you're, you're there. Mm-hmm. I'm 22. I'm 22. Yeah, I'm 23. Yeah. See, you guys can be no more. Well, 
I'm just like so amazed to see young people sold out and Derry and I, we love young people because like I said, I'm getting older. I need to make sure that someone can help me across the street <laughs> when I get there. <laughs> so you're just, yeah, you're showing that there are some young people. We just don't get that media cover to see, you know, other people. So thank you so much for demonstrating true leadership in the Lord from the young people. And when I say young people, not how long you've been in the Lord, because you've probably been in the Lord over 20 years. Well, I mean, young people is like, you're 22 and you're sold out so young. You know, that's amazing. You're a Jeremiah, both of you guys. You, you're a David. You know, they start very young, you know? And mm-hmm. yeah, so yeah. that's amazing to have that. That's wealth. That's living on purpose. That is riches in heaven and on earth. He's going to bless you so much because you're focusing on him. So I say nothing but greatness. It's your group. One purpose. So we see you thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. So give me a nugget for today. <laughs> for the young people. Oh, you guys got me emotional because I just love the Lord and you guys just been so amazing on this on this uh, fellowshipping time. Wow. Oh. Feel the help of the Lord. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel it. I feel it. So I'm going to first go with Judith. What kind of message can you give to the young people regarding staying on focus as a young person in Christ? Mm-hmm. I would say, oh, what did I say? I would say, to um I have it but I'm trying to figure out the words. <laughs> um, oh, think of that. I'm trying what I would say to the young people I would say is that there is always a plan for you, there is always a purpose for you and mm. even though it it may be hard, you're you're not sure where you're supposed to go, but there's someone bigger and there's someone's and someone greater who is going to show you the way, who's going to guide you and lead you to where you're supposed to be. Nothing, nothing in life is like is an accident. The Lord, the Lord plans it because it's it's in His will. So keep walking in it. Keep finding what you want to do, because yeah. you will, you will, you will find it. You will find your purpose, and you will walk in your purpose, and you will live in the purpose that the Lord has created and was meant for you. That's what I would say. Amazing. How about you, Jordan? What would you say about the young people say, I don't have fun. I want to have fun. The Christian life is so boring. What would you tell them? If I had to give um, a word of encouragement to those, you know, who feel that way, I would just say, you know, uh, one thing that I learned is that God qualifies those Others feel that are deemed unqualified. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you know, um, the thing is, with, you know, when you think with uh, young people being Christians, you can't do certain things. You can't do uh, live a certain way. You can't have this. But the the truth is, you know, you end up having the best life living in Christ. You know what I mean? For one, you have a sound mind. Mm-hmm. You know. You have the ability of activities of your limbs. You know, you have access to um, the man that created this whole universe. Mm. You know, and uh, I would just say um, to don't um, underestimate that. And if I would say another thing, uh, don't despise um, the days of small beginnings. Mm. Yeah, Mm. because uh, just because you may start off a certain way. Um, doesn't mean that's uh, where God has you or end result to be, you know, but you won't know what it is if you give up during that process. Wow. But yes, I was from a profession to encourage. When you just said that, um, that scripture from Revelation came up, it says, the last shall be first. Uh, with that being said, <laughs> Thank you, guys. But don't go anywhere. I'm going to bring back my boss, Jerry Royce. Wow. Young people are amazing. Oh, I mean, oh, you guys are amazing. 
So Jerry, Jerry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. Are. No, I thank you so much for this opportunity because I am so amazed by your wisdom. I really am. And you both, I see nothing but greatness. And uh, I'm going to put it back in the hands of the boss. Um, Jerry? Yeah, I'm so glad um, that Jordan reached out to us, you know, to have him back. Wow. Yeah. So the young people can um, listen to some people that's out there, um, you know, putting, investing in themselves. Let's say it like that. Investing Mm -hmm. in themselves. Yeah. That's right. Praise God. But look, ladies, well, young lady, young gentlemen, thank you so much for um, blessing our platform. And Jordan, anytime, man, you know, we got out the show. They would love to have you, man. So we're definitely going to be sending you out Mm -hmm. some more invites, okay? If that's okay with you. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, thank you so much. Really you're welcome. You're welcome. And we will be playing your song at the end of the broadcast. So you guys can go ahead and you can go ahead and close it out, Kimmy Kim. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Yes. Yes. And um, thank I you. want to know if before we close, I'd like to close out in prayer. Can one of you pray us out? Jordan, you faded out a little bit. Pick, you get, uh, pick your mic up a little bit. Yeah, your audio out a little. So I, 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 apologize. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> Judith, would you want to? Would you want to go? Okay, I can take it. I'll take it. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for today, Lord. We thank you for um, us being able to talk, Lord God. And we just pray, Heavenly Father, that people will be blessed, Lord God. That people will be ministered, Heavenly Father, Lord. We pray that you would have your way through everybody, through, you, through the young people and all the way to the older generation. Heavenly Father, we just pray that your good news will continue to spread, Lord God, that the name of Jesus will be lifted up, Lord God, um, throughout this whole earth, Lord God. May your praises be, may your name be exalted, Lord God, and may your name be magnified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Can I get an amen? Ooh, hallelujah. Well, I just want to thank you once again for coming on to Jerry Royce and Late Night with Kimmy Kim. And Jerry, oh, wow. We must have them back. And uh, I love their, their um, they are so respectful and so, and so big in the moor. They have so much wisdom at a very young age. You know, well, I mean, age on, you know, life, because you're, you, you have a lot of wisdom. <laughs> so I just want to thank you so thank much you. for demonstrating to us that, you know, you guys are busy and you know, people are busy and uh, I will keep you in my prayers and I wish nothing but good um, success with your single. And I will be buying a single. Uh, can you download it from like um, iPhone or is it, can you purchase it? Yes, you could. Mm-hmm. um, you could download it on all streaming platforms. So just to give you some examples, some ideas. Um, so for, for iPhones, you have like I, uh, iTunes. Apple Music, iTunes, okay. you know. Amazon uh, too, right? Amazon Music. Yes, Amazon yeah. Music as well. Okay. okay. So that's where okay. it's available to download. Okay. And uh, family, please support these wonderful young people. We can support them in sports. Let's, let's support them when they're doing things for the Lord. And I'm going to sign off and thank you, Jerry Woods, once again. My name is Kimmy Kim, and I want to thank you all for coming on to uh, Monday Night for Kimmy Kim and Jerry Royce. And uh, we're going to sign off and peace. And remember, God loves you. To a mountain, and God, I called you.